And then some of the books that we hear about are not included in the Bible. Why? Yeah. Now you ask about books that are not there. There are the apocryphal books of the Bible, and you'll find them in some of the large editions and in the Catholic Bible. They are not inspired. The authors do not claim inspiration. They are often very good historical sources, but they are not inspired as are the writings in this Bible, which is the King James or authorized version. Apocryphal books are not included. We do not use them as references because the authors did not claim inspiration. Next, please. There's a chance the Book of Enoch is revealing the truth according to what we now know. The Book of Enoch was suppressed in the 4th century because it did not accurately reflect the ancient scriptures. What if this isn't the case? What if it was? Because it accurately depicted human nature. In the book, it is explained how a group of angels known as the Watchers started rebelling against God and started teaching. People things they weren't supposed to know, such astrology and how to make nuclear weapons. They started lying to human women in addition to doing that which led to the creation of the Nephilim. Others claim that the book is untrue, yet given the descriptions of how the earth was formed, the positions of the sun and moon and even the current whereabouts of the Watcher, angels perhaps, The Book of Enoch 6, 1 and 2 And it came to pass, after the children of men had increased in those days. Beautiful and comely daughters were born to them. And the angels, the sons of the heavens, saw and lusted after them, and said one to another, Behold, we will choose for ourselves wives from among the children of men, and will beget for ourselves children. And they took wives for themselves, and every one chose for himself, one each. And they began to go, into them, and were promiscuous with them. And they taught them charms and spells, and they showed them the cutting of roots and trees. And they became pregnant, and bore large giants. And their height was three thousand cubits. These devoured all the toil of men, until men were unable to sustain them. And the giants turned against them to devour men, and they began to sin against birds, and against animals, and against reptiles, and against fish, and they devoured one another's flesh, and drank the blood. Then the earth complained about the lawless ones. A short summary of the Watchers, the Lost Book of Enoch. The Lord placed these angels on earth to look after the people. The leader of the Watchers was an angel called Samyaza. One day these angels sinned against God and lusted after the women on earth. Their children were called Nephilim, and due to their great size, began to eat the people. These angels didn't stop there, they taught humans how to do many different things. They taught men how to make weaponry for war. They taught women how to use cosmetics in order to attract... They taught people sorcery, 
in other words, black magic. This angered the Lord, and he flooded the whole world in the days of Noah. Somebody else asked what I think of the book of Enoch. Okay, so the book of Enoch is quoted by Peter and Jude. And so those parts would be inspired. But the book of Enoch, although it provides great insight into what happened in the Genesis 6 story, where it says the sons of God, the B'nai Elohim in Hebrew, the sons of God came down and had relations with the daughters of men and created the Nephilim or the giants. And the book of Enoch gives us further insight into that story, what happened. And it says that those fallen angels came down and they taught men uh, the cutting of roots, which could be sorcery. It could have to do with like uh, ayahuasca and people having these, uh, using objects or using chemicals from nature to access the spiritual realm. Um, it also talks about how the fallen angels came down and taught about metallurgy, how to make uh, metal out of the ground to create weapons. It taught women how to be seductive through makeup and painting their eyelids. But there's also some problems with the book of Enoch because one of the problems is, is with the height of the giants. So the book of Enoch, I believe, says that the giants were um, like, 30 or 45 cubits tall, which would be like 150 feet tall, which uh, I don't think could be supported by the Bible or even reality. So I think that's one of the reasons why the book of Enoch was not chosen to be inspired or canonical. There's some mistakes in it in that regard, but it was quoted by Peter, quoted by Jude. Those parts are definitely inspired and it's a good reading. It's good to even if you don't read it, go to YouTube, listen to the audio version. I think it's very insightful, but not on the same level as scripture. I know why they took the book of Enoch out of the Bible, because it tells you all about the fallen angels and where they came to earth and about what time period it was in. And that's next on the trumpet. The book of Enoch, chapter three, fallen angels. Then swear they all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were in all 200 who descended in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they called it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And if you go right down to the bottom of Mount Hermon and go to the head of the Jordan River, which is where it comes out of the bottom of that mountain, you'll see El Paneus right there. And that's where we're going. If you click on that little picture bubble right there, it goes to the bottom of Mount Hermon right there at the head of the Jordan River. And that little sign right there showed you where there was a temple complex at the bottom of Mount Hermon. There was a huge building over that cave entrance right there and all along this edge. And right inside this, right behind where that big temple was, is the altar. That old jagged rock inside that cave was the altar. And the fallen angels, they knew exactly how to build one. And if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewn stone. For if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. The book of Exodus here was found right next to the book of Enoch in the Qumran Dead Sea Scrolls. This is the city of Qumran, or what's left of it. And those are the mountains where they buried all the Old Testament documents as the Romans came to town. You want to know when this happened? It's right here in verse 5. And they were in all 200 who descended in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. In the days of Jared. The days of Jared are right here. And look who else is right here. Tubal Cain, Naamah. That's Noah's wife. So this is the time map, and these are the days of Jared. And this is when the Nephilim descended to Mount Hermon. Right here when Tubal Cain and all. They're all mentioned in the Bible in Genesis. Let me tell you what I read in the next chapter. Angels took and brought me to a place in which those who were there were like flaming fire. And when they wished, they appeared as men. You know, the sun is a star and it's nothing but flaming fire. And these can appear as men when they want. Throughout the whole book, it refers to the angels as stars. That there were seven stars bound and it was a prison for the stars. And the stars which roll over in the fire are those which have transgressed the commandment of the Lord. 
Let me take you to this book in the Bible right here. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Like and follow the trumpet for more. And in Jesus' name, have a blessed day. These are the angels mentioned in Christianity and Judaism in books such as the Bible, that Tobit and Estrus, Talmud and Zohar, and finally the book of Enoch, the Bible, Michael and Gabriel, the apocryphal books, Tobit and Esdras, Raphael and Uriel, the Talmud and Zohar, Jewish mystical texts, Metatron, Sandalphon and Selophiel. The Book of Enoch, Uriel, one of the seven archangels, Raphael, the angel in charge of the spirit of men, Ragel, Ragel is responsible for overseeing the actions of other angels, Serakiel, Serakiel is responsible for overseeing the spirits of the children of men who sin against God, Uzaaz and Aziel, these angelic leaders are mentioned in 3 Enoch 4. Remiel, one of the holy angels, Remiel was set over those who rise, Turiel, Yemiel, and Yehadiel. These angels are listed as chiefs of tens in the Book of Enoch, watchers in the Book of Enoch. The watchers are angels dispatched to earth to watch over humans. They soon begin to lust for human women and father the Nephilim. The Book of Enoch might be telling the truth. Now we have been told that the Book of Enoch was taken out in the 4th century because it wasn't accurate to the original scriptures. But what if that wasn't the case? What if it was because it told the truth about humanity? Well, you see, it's described in the book about how a group of angels known as the Watchers started rebelling against God and began teaching humans things that they weren't supposed to know, like astrology and creating weapons of mass destruction. Not only did they do that, but they began laying with human women, which resulted in the birth of the Nephilims. Some argue that the book was false, but with the accounts of the way the world was shaped, the sun and the moon, and even the current location of the Watcher Angels, maybe. The Book of Enoch may indeed tell the truth. We have always been told that it was excluded from the biblical canon in the 4th century due to its incompatibility with other sacred texts. But is this choice legitimate? What if its removal was not due to inconsistency, but rather because it contained a truth that was too disturbing about human history, which the religious authorities of that time did not want to disclose? The Book of Enoch tells a troubling story of rebellious angels known as the Watchers who disobeyed God. Not only did they teach forbidden knowledge to humans, such as astrology and the creation of devastating weapons, but they went further by committing the unholy act of uniting with human women. From these unholy unions, the Nephilim were born beings who were part angel and part human. Many skeptics dismiss the book as a fabrication, a mere invention. However, if we carefully observe the world around us, the position of the sun and moon in Thesky, and even the concept of guardian angels according to certain beliefs, we might wonder if the book of Enoch is closer to reality than we think. The archangels are Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, Uriel, Chemuel, Ophiel, Zadkiel, Metatron, Ragel, and Barakiel. And each archangel has a specific role to play in God's plan for the world. Michael is the leader of God's armies and is often depicted fighting against Satan and his demons. Gabriel is the angel of good news and is often depicted announcing the birth of Jesus to Mary. Raphael is the angel of healing and is often depicted accompanying Tobias on his journey. Uh, Uriel is the angel of fire and is often depicted guarding the entrance to hell. Chamuel is the angel of love and compassion and is often depicted uniting people in love. Jophiel is the angel of wisdom and is often depicted illuminating the minds of people. Zadkiel is the angel of forgiveness and mercy and is often depicted releasing people from their sins. Metatron is the angel of judgment and is often depicted weighing the souls of the dead. The Book of Enoch provides an account of historical events leading up to the Great Flood at the end of the last Ice Age. This Hebrew text tells a story of the Watchers. The Watchers were sent to Earth to protect humanity and watch over them. In biblical terms, they were called fallen angels. The Watchers became infatuated with human women and began getting very close to them. The Book of Enoch tells that they had children. The children of the Watchers and humans were called the Nephilim. The Nephilim 
were said to be giants and savages who ate humans. Giants appear in almost all folklore and mythology, from every continent and religion, which begs the question, is there any truth to it? What is going on, my brothers and sisters in Christ? All right. All right. So this is another Genesis 6 study, and we are close to being done. I promise you. I know I said that about the whole entire time we have been in the 20s or the late. Yeah. So, yeah. So now today's study is mainly on the Apocrypha and the pseudo I don't know if I said this word right. Pseudo, 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 you'll see the word. But, yeah, y'all know me. I get tongue tied. Uh, but, yeah. We're going to discuss things based on that with this Genesis 6 study, because guess what? Mainly, most of these apocryphas is mainly based on Genesis 6, and people aren't aware of that. And before we go any further, let's open up with a word of prayer, shall we? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, Holy Spirit, Lord, have your way. Help everyone to understand what's real and what's fake. Help them to understand what to be, what's inspired by you and what's not. Help them to understand what's... Uh, what's good and what's bad uh, have us help us holy spirit with your discernment we rely on you we trust in you and we thank you and we love that you lead us for your namesake thank you for being our lord and saving creator thank you for being our teacher and our everything that we need and that's that's all we need is you lord jesus christ we love you we thank you and all glory to you always and forever and it's in christ jesus name we pray all this amen and to further clear some things, there are some books that are referenced in the Bible, our 66 canon Bible, that we need to actually comprehend and realize God is leading us to these books so we can further get a clear reference of what's going on in the biblical text. All right, so here are a few more of the lost books. All right, you got the Book of the Wars of the Lord, and that's referenced in Numbers 21, 14. You got the Book of Jasher. All right, that's referenced in Joshua 10, 13, and actually is referenced in numerous books, actually. All right, and then you have Book of the Acts of Solomon, and that's mentioned in 1 Kings eleven forty one, And that's a very interesting book because you will learn about what all Solomon and all what made him fall. And when you read it, it's all because of a woman. And when you read throughout the whole Bible, it is because of, it's all because we're not blaming the woman in, in, in detail, but what Solomon is trying to say is because of the love of a woman. That's why we all fall. All right. Look at Adam. He fell because of Eve. All right. He didn't want, you know, God could have made another female for him. He, he, he could have destroyed Eve if he wanted to. It was Adam that was in charge of the ground. All right. Because he, he yeah. All right. That's another study for another day but yeah just read that book it's very good all right so but what i recommend like always you read the first you do the 66 books first that's what i always say first seek ye the kingdom of god you will always read the holy bible first and then you go to the others all right so for this study like i said if you're not ready for this this is like food like whole food right here all right not baby milk all right if you're still on baby milk please do not go any further all right for many of these books it will lead you to confusion all right because you're not having the holy spirit guide you all right so with all that being said and then you have others you know but the main one i know we're going to speak on today is the most popular one is the book of enoch and I know everyone's always asking, why Enoch? Why the book of Enoch? All right. What makes Enoch so intriguing and interesting? All right. Well, y'all got to understand the history on the book of Enoch. And I'm not going to go further more into the history. You have to do that for yourself. What I'm here is to give biblical receipts to help you get closer to the Lord. All right. So with this, with that being said, the book of Enoch. All right. It will lead some people astray. It's not inspired by the 66 canon, okay? But, however, this book is it's, it's very popular in its text with what's being written. All right? It's very good historical things, okay? Very good historical things that you got to understand what the authors in the Holy Bible are writing and what they're referring to, okay? Because y'all got to understand what makes a dragon a dragon what, what what imagination did that person inspire them to call it a dragon 
All right. Uh, for an example, what inspiration gave a person calling uh, a cyclops a cyclops or right? a unicorn a unicorn, so on and so forth. OK, so Book of Enoch really get into detail, really more depth than Genesis six. OK, Genesis six tell you, yeah, they came down and made it. And we're going to go back into that chapter. All right. And but the Book of Enoch actually tell you what all that they do. All right. Like war weapons, um, uh, witchcraft. OK. Um, uh, I'm having a brain fart. Makeup, um, uh, astrology. All right. So it's so much into that book that the fallen angels, which are called the watchers. And yes, the watchers are mentioned in the 66 canon biblical books. All right. Um, and they are mentioned. They're, 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 they're the watchers and they came down. All right. Just like what Genesis six, you know, was trying to tell you they came down and made it with the, the, the females. Okay. And they had Nephilim children, giants. Okay. And they, you know, do on and so on and so forth. And they mess with DNA with animal DNA. All right. The reason why this is so important, because Christ mentions this is how the end will be. OK, it will look like the times of Noah and everyone is always wondering well, what the times of Noah look like. Well, guys, it's not because of just sin that was rampant. OK, if that was the case, there should be a flood already. All right. All right. And with the 66 canon books included with the Apocryphos, you will see books like uh, let's get down to we'll actually get down to the Apocryphos. You have the book of Tobit, Judith, Esther, which is an addition to Esther, the wisdom of Solomon. Uh, I don't know how to say this word. I don't know how to say that. Uh, the Brock, the three holy children, Susanna, Bella and the dragon, first Maccabees and second Maccabees. OK, now the things with the Apocryphus. All right. They are, you know, apocalypse books. All right. And also called hidden books. OK, they are very, very important. But the thing about them, like I said, you have to read the 66. Do these contradict with the 66? In my personal opinion, it does not. All right. Mainly these apocryphal books is talking about fallen angels and mainly fighting the demonic realm and all the stuff that they do. It's mainly about them. OK, so the Holy Bible. Hey, keep it that word. Holy Bible is mainly about it is Jesus. The whole book is about Jesus. All right. So with these apocryphals at it, it's, it's just talking about, you know, it, it it's more in depth, like the like the Maccabean revolt. All right. You got the first Maccabees, second Maccabees. If you read those, it, it'll tell you where Hanukkah came from. All right. I always wonder where Hanukkah came from, where you read those books. It'll tell you where Hanukkah came from and the situation like that. All right. All right. And then we have these that y'all want to be very careful from. All right. These are the ones that's yeah. All right. This this is where I think the Catholic want to twist and mess everyone up. All right. These are the ones you want to stay away from. All right. These are called the lost books. All right. You have the gospel of the birth of Mary. All right. I don't know how to say that word. I ain't going to say it. You can look at it. All right. The first gospel of the infancy of Jesus Christ. All right. Thompson, uh, the Thomas gospel. All right. Uh, the, the epistle of Jesus Christ. And uh, I don't know how to say him. And yeah. But as y'all can tell, just read these for yourself. That's on the screen. All right. And uh <sighs> The main one that I want y'all to like, uh, probably all of these aren't going to stick out to y'all because you're not really, I'm not, I'm not assuming, but uh, I know y'all aren't going to be familiar with a lot of these people. All right. You got to be really in depth with the Bible to understand what's going on. All right. So you have like this. Here's the one that really will mess you up if you have not read the first uh, 60 well genesis to revelations all right you have the first book of adam and eve stay away from that the second book of adam and eve stay away from that all right you got the book of the secrets of enoch stay away from that all right this is you, the book of enoch have so many other uh books you know there's so many book of enochs basically all right but the main one is the one with the watchers all right that everyone is stuck on and i believe that's the one that everyone that that that's the legit one all right the holy spirit have not led me astray yet so far and i'm not gonna think he's ever gonna lead me astray you know you gotta put your trust and faith in him that's the whole point so he will lead you okay and at this point he have not gave me any you know uh anything bad about the book of enoch with the watchers all right other than you know uh uh, angels having uh, abilities to forgive, but yeah, other than that, you know, like I said, don't look at the book of Enoch as something inspirational. All right, uh, you never get anything, um, from a verse from the book of Enoch from me. All right, it's just get something 
for history. All right, some of the, something. This is where they, like I said, the authors had a reference to. All right, and then you got the testaments of all the tribes, like Reuben, Simon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulon, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Joseph, and Benjamin. All right, and then you have the Book of Jubilees. All right, like I said, read the sixty-six first. The Book of Jubilees is a very long book. All right, it's something it really get in detail with what's going on. All right, with a lot of things. All right, such as the Book of Jasher as well. All right, so the Book of Jubilee, I believe, is very important too as well. But like I said, read the sixty-six first. All right. But the biggest one of them all that caught my attention, that led me, that the Holy Spirit led me to all of this, and I was familiar with the Book of Enoch. Okay, because that was the main one that everyone talked about. But the book of Jasher, uh, and there's many other books on the book of Jasher. You know, people say the original one, this ain't the original one. But however, like I said, the Holy Spirit leads you for his namesake. And he led me to this book of Jasher. All right. That was referenced. Uh, and uh, I, I gave you all whatever it was. I'm not going to say it right now because I don't have it in front of me. But yeah, uh, the book of Jasher is mentioned in the 66 candle books. OK. And uh, the thing about this. OK. Like I said, there's many versions of the book of Jasher. And when you read this, these versions. All right. The, the particular one that I am talking about is the one that explains uh, how Cain, you know, and Abel were they came from a. Um, uh, they were twins, but also had three sisters in them. So five, you know, five together, uh, five, I don't know how to call them quinces or something like that. You got your, your twin, the triplets and quadruplets and the quinces, I guess, and six topless and septopless. But yeah, they were what they were the five. All right. It was Cain and Abel. And th they had three sisters that came out of the one birth of uh, Eve, which is understandable, which, you know, hey, that 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 makes more sense. All right. That blew my mind when I read that and everything. And not only that, it speaks more into Nimrod and the Tower of Babel. All right. And what more they were doing at the Tower of Babel. And that's another study for another day. But it was really discussing more on the Tower of Babel. All right. And it was meant mentioning more on how hybrid creatures look all right and what all that they can do okay it was getting into depth with a lot of things all right and how abraham's father was into uh, uh idolatry with uh, these idols all right and everything and it's just it's it's, it's kind of creepy once you read it uh, but it's you read the 66 first like i said i'm gonna keep saying that all right and then go read these others because it will enlighten you the Holy Spirit will brighten your mind. Like I said, he will renew your mind. Okay. And everything that you're learning and he will set you free from all the truths I mean, from all the lies. All right. And he, cause he is truth. Okay. All right. You have books like the book of the wars of the Lord. All right. And that book will actually lead to somewhere like the book of the giants. All right. The Book of Giants explains more in depth with details of how the giants felt and how they were like, oh, we didn't choose to be born. All right. That's why they had so much anger. And that explains so much about them being enraged and always hating, you know, to be like that because they didn't choose to be born and choose to have a choice. Like, look, man, we we, uh, we got a hybrid daddy that don't give a crap about us. They they the, the reason why they fell for selfish reasons. All right. And and not only that. They, they they evil they prideful people so uh, now i see why you know the giants were upset and then of course if y'all are not familiar of who wrote uh proverbs and some of psalms and ecclesiastics and song of songs all right solomon actually wrote a whole bunch of that because y'all once you once we get to the study of solomon he asked god for wisdom all right and god was like whoa no one ever asked for wisdom you know instead of riches and fame he wanted wisdom so god gave him wisdom all right he was the and as, as, you know outside of you know of course god is number one of everything that's where we get our wisdom and strength from and so even einstein bill gates or whoever y'all want to say no one can co compare to solomon's wisdom and knowledge and wealth actually this dude was very wealthy all right to do once you learn solomon about him and his 700 wives 300 concubines all of them led him astray and that's why he became you know into pagan worship but yeah the, 
is because of a woman. That's what I was trying to say. You can have, he, he gained the world. Everything that we pretty much been, you know, learning like in the wicked world, part one and two, you know, in the Proverbs, it's all coming from the Lord talking, speaking through Solomon, telling me it's all going to be worthless if you don't have Christ. You can gain the world, but lose your soul. You gain nothing. Okay. All right. So what, what man, you know, if he gains the world, loses his soul. Okay. You want your soul. Okay. Because that's, that's eternal. Okay. Y'all got to remember if you choose Christ, uh, y'all, he's the creator of the universe. He created everything from nothing. The devil has to take God's creation and create things. Well, guess what? God don't have to do that. He created everything from nothing. Okay. So just imagine what God can do for you. All right, then you got the Acts of the Psalm. I think I mentioned that. All right, and then you have the Annals of the uh, Kings of Israel, which is basically just First Kings, Second Kings, First Chronicles, Second Chronicles, uh, Samuel, and all that. Basically, in a nutshell, if you want to basically put it in that way. Same, basically, with the Annals of the Kings of Judah. All right, and the records of Samuel, Nathan, and Gad. All right, then you got the records of Shemaiah, the prophet, and Edo the seer. All right. The Annals of Juhu, the Acts of Uzziah, the Limits of Jeremiah. All right. And then you have Esther. All right. So, yeah, if you go to God questions, what is the book of Jasher and should it be in the Bible? All right. So you zoom that in. All right. The answer is also known as the book of the upright one and the Greek Septuagint and the book of the just ones in the Latin Vulgate. The book of Jasher was probably a collection of completions of the ancient Hebrew songs and poems praising the heroes of Israel and their exploits in battle. The book of Jasher is mentioned in Joshua. 10 12 through 13 when the lord stopped the sun in the middle of the day during the battle of beth haram it is also mentioned in second samuel 1 18 through 27 as containing the song of or lament or of the bow that mournful and i didn't get the rest of that but yeah just know this the book of J uh, jasher is mentioned in the book of joshua all right that is after the torah which is Genesis through Deuteronomy, all right? And then you have it mentioned in 2 Samuels, all right? So that's where I was like, yeah, the Lord's trying to tell me something. I need to check out the book of Jasher, all right? All right, before we go any further, I want y'all to look at what verse uh, uh, 28.10 in Isaiah says. So Isaiah 28.10 says this. He tells us, which is God, he tells us everything over and over. One line at a time one line at a time a little here and a little there understand that guys so you have the 66 canon books inspired by the holy spirit all right and everything is answered in the holy bible all right the thing about you know, people not understanding Revelations. I have to understand Revelations is the last book of the Bible. And if you don't understand Revelation, it's because the Holy Spirit is testing you. Have you read the other 65 books in the Bible? Because everything is answered in those 60, 65 books. Okay. Nothing, you know, that people get their little theology, can, you know, about the end of the world. No, no. It's all explained. A little bit here, a little bit there. It's not all going to be in one book. It's not all going to be in one chapter. Okay? Not all in one verse. You have to go. It's like a puzzle piece. Okay? It explains here and there. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. Okay? It is a, a message from outside of time, space, and matter. And then when you open up at 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 15, work hard so you can present yourself to God and receive his approval. Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly explains the word of truth. And if you're not familiar how the NLT explain it, well, here's the KJV. All right, 2 Timothy 2.15, study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And then Psalms 23.3 says this, he renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. And then Psalms 25, 11, for the honor of your name, O Lord, forgive me. Sorry, let me repeat that. 
for the honor of your name, O Lord. Forgive my many, many sins. And then Psalms 31, 3. You are my rock and my fortress. For the honor of your name, lead me out of this danger. All right, so Genesis 6, like we said. All right, world's going wrong. This is the reason of the flood, okay? And then the people began to multiply on the earth, and doctors were born to them. The sons of God saw the beautiful woman and took any they wanted as their wives. All right, that's where you'll get mainly your stuff from, from the book of Enoch, if you want to get more depth into details. Okay, as you can tell, the Bible verse in here, you only get, what, a few verses to talk about, you know, that little bit here and there. And then you have a whole book called Enoch. Okay, why is Enoch so important so we're going to talk about that all right so we see that in genesis 6 it's alluding to this all right so as you like i said the holy spirit he leads you okay and if you have not read all 66 books the holy spirit lives in all of us all right he's only going to know what he can tell you by what you know what you feed into your body which is your temple that he lives in okay he is going to lead you out of love he's not going to force you to do something you don't want to do all right he's love okay so if you didn't learn it in this by reading his word okay then you're going to be confused of what's going on um when you read uh, a part in one of the books like i'm going to go to the book of jude we're going to go to there all right and then we're going to be like the book of the enoch when did enoch say all this all right so let's go there all right so let's go to the book of jude so you go to the book of jude all right, you go to chapter one, all right, because they only have one chapter in the book of Jude. All right, and you go to verse 14. You see Enoch, who lived in the seventh generation after Adam, prophesied about these people. He said, listen, the Lord is coming with countless thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment on the people of the world. He will convict every person of all the ungodly things they have done and for all the insults that ungodly sinners have spoken against him. All right. So when did Enoch say all this? All right. So let's go find out who Enoch is. And it says Enoch is the seventh generation after Adam. Well, where's Adam mentioned? Well, Adam's mentioned all the way in Genesis. So that means we got to go all the way in Genesis. So here's Genesis 5, where everyone loves to skip this chapter, because this is where people get a little upset when they read about the genealogy and, you know, so on and so forth, the who begotten, 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 and they can't pronounce the names. All right. I'm not going to lie. When I was a kid, this is what made me stop. All right. I stopped at this particular chapter and didn't even go to Genesis 6 and understand what was going on in Genesis 6. All right. Because I stopped at this point. That's my laziness. All right. But. Like I started my journey in 2016 um, at a, in my mid-20s, okay, when I started the journey actually wanting to do the journey on my own and read what the book has to say on my own. Because I was tired of the contradictions. I was tired of everyone saying, no, this is right. No, this is right. So who better to, you know, guide you for himself? It's the Holy Spirit, the one who actually wrote the book, okay? So... With, you know, I'm not trying to say, you know, with everybody out there with a degree is bad. All right. But you do not need no dang on degree to spread the word of God and to know the word of God. Anointing out beats and will rip up that master degree. OK, so with that being said, ladies and gents, I want you all to understand is God who chooses who will know it all and the gifts to give all right so genesis 5 the descendants of adam all right this is a written account of the descendants of adam when god created human beings he made them to be like himself he created them male and female and he blessed them and called them human when adam was 130 years old he became the father of a son who was just like him in his very image, he named his son Seth. After the birth of Seth, Adam lived another 800 years and he had other sons and daughters. All right. That was that should be a question for everyone. Dang, how did they live so long? All right. It's because their DNA was so pure. OK, even though the world got cursed. All right. And then when we read in Genesis six, we already learned that the spirit could not take it. He's going to, you know, wipe their lifespan all the way down to one hundred and twenty because they only flesh and they shouldn't be living this dang long in this sinful state. All right. So let's go to verse five. All right. Uh, 
actually, no, let me go back to verse four, because this is where other people uh, ask, where did Cain get his wife? Where did they get their wives? Get their wives? You know, okay? God did not make uh, incest illegal until after the great flood, when DNA got split it up in Genesis 11 and everything got split and part and everybody had to go separate. All right. Y'all got to remember, they had to do incest too. So get off of uh, Cain, all right, because apparently they had to go do some incest when they got split up, okay? Who y'all think, cousin and cousin and sister and sister or whoever they were doing, all right? It was close relatives. Y'all got to put it that way, all right, doing each other just to repopulate, all right? Y'all got to understand that, okay? They, they, it, it, okay, I'm just going to continue because y'all need to understand it was pure DNA until, you know, things got more corrupt we're not evolving we dissolving all right so let's go to verse four after the birth of seth adam lived another 800 years and he had other sons and daughters okay 800 years is a long time to have some kids i'm only 30 and i got three okay and no i'm 32 sorry and i got three i know i could have had way more but my sinful state was doing other things to and prevent other you know more but i don't you know uh, that, that's, that's so on and so forth and just that, that not just for me that's for everyone too i'm sure everyone should be having more kids than what they should be having now all right but yes with that being said uh adam i'm sure he had buttloads of children all right and their genes were so pure i'm sure every you know everyone knows every climax led to a pregnancy all right so i'm not trying to say e was always big and you know you know pregnant but i'm sure you know they was getting it all right so verse five adam lived 930 years and then he died all right when seth was 105 years old he became the father of enosh all right and then we explain that enosh all right when he provoked the name of the lord but that's another study all right after the birth of enosh seth lived another 807 years and he had other sons and daughters seth lived 912 years and then he died when Enos was 90 years old, when he became the father of Kenan, after the birth of Kenan, Enos lived another 815 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Enos lived 905 years, and then he died. All right, so the world's getting more populated, populated, populated. Everybody, kids coming left and right. And I'm going to warn y'all guys, from Genesis 1 through 6, well, actually 1 through 11 is the prehistory. It, well, let me just put it like this. From Genesis, you know, before the flood, that was a lot of, you know, people that was not going to heaven. As you can tell, it was eight people out of the whole world that made it in the ark. All right, so that's a lot of them that's in hell. All right, that's probably you know, that didn't even give a crap about the Lord because you got to remember they were right there. And there's not many explained. There's not much said in the first world from Adam to Noah, not very much said. That's a little bit of chapters. All right. So out of the whole book, the FYI dimension in the second world. Okay. Uh, where were we? When Enos was 90 years old, he became the father of Kenan. After the birth of Kenan, Enos lived another 815 years and he had other sons and daughters. Enos lived 905 and then he died. When Kenan was 70 years old, he became the father of Mahuhel. After the birth of Mahuhel, Kenan lived another 840 years and he had other sons and daughters. Kenan lived 910 years and he then he died. When Mahuhel was 65 years old, he became the father of Jared. After the birth of Jared, Mahilhel lived another 830 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Mahilhel lived 895 years, and then he died. When Jared was 162 years old, he became the father of Enoch. Enoch, Enoch, Enoch. Oh, there we go. There's the name Enoch. Finally, we got to him. All right. So when Jared was 162 years old, he became the father of Enoch. After the birth of Enoch, Jared lived another 800 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Jared lived 962 years, and then he died. When Enoch was 65 years old, he became the father of Methuselah. After the birth of Methuselah, Enoch lived in close fellowship with God for another 300, and 300 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Enoch lived 365 years, walking in close fellowship with God. Then one day he disappeared because God took him. Whoa, that sound way different from all the others that we previously discussed on. 
All right, such and such died, such and such died, such and such died. It seemed like everybody died until it got to Enoch. All right, Enoch did not die. Okay, what is going on here? So clearly the Holy Spirit is trying to lead you somewhere to learn more about Enoch. All right, why is Enoch mentioned in the book of Jude, the book before the book of Revelations? And why is he, you know, well, how did he get a book? All right, and not much is said about this man. So, with that being said, the book of Enoch it put a lot of curiosity in a lot of people. All right, like I said, the book of Enoch it's not inspired, but it it contains a lot of truth. Let's put it like that: it contains a lot of truth. All right. And before we even started on the Apocryphus, we have almost 22 parts. All right. We got Genesis 6, part one study, part two, part three, part four. All right. And I should have labeled them uh, early on. Talk about the Nephilims and the Giants, mainly on one through four and debunking, you know, the sons of God's being, you know, the line of Seth in uh, part four. I suggest you all to go look at that because if you still believe that the line of Seth is the sons of God. Then, yeah, you're not going to understand the whole entire Bible. All right. And then we discuss on angels. All right. And then archangels. OK. Demons. All right. Deem, uh, we got another part on demons. That's so much stuff that had to be on demons because people were wondering where demons come from. All right. And they were having, you know, uh, a contract, you know, I guess um, contradiction or what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, they, they was getting confused on, you know, the difference between fallen angels and demons. All right. Because fallen angels are different from demons. OK. Demons are embodied spirits that used to be Nephilims. Okay, and the Nephilims have nowhere to go, nowhere in hell, no place in heaven. Okay, so they roam the earth, finding no peace. Christ speaks on it. All right, so we have Genesis 6, part 9, study mentioned the witches, because a lot of them don't, you know, you got to look at Genesis 6 and how it mentioned that they took wives. Okay, you don't think they're going to teach their wives what to do, how to do it, and you don't think that their wives is going to be more demonic, because this is the source of demonic. All right. Well, fallen angel. All right. So with that being said, the book of Enoch speaks a lot on how they taught mankind how to make weapons, witchcraft, cutting the roots and all that stuff. Astrology. All right. Magic stuff. OK. Stuff that shouldn't be taught to men. All right. And before we even opened up a apocryphal book, all this was mentioned in the Bible. All right. And then like the false gods mythology. OK, uh, the false gods like the Anunnaki. OK. All right. And then we have the creatures, the cryptid. OK. And then we have the advanced ancient civilizations, aliens, UFOs, dimensions. All right. Speaking on that with the realms in heaven and hell. OK. And then strange places on the earth. OK. Bizarre and fascinating places. OK. And explaining how the seven deadly sins came about. Okay, from these fallen angels and why the world became what it is, why it's so wicked. All this, all right, is alluding to Genesis 6. Okay, and not only that, it started from the beginning where Genesis 3, when the man and woman sinned and the serpent, you know, enmity between her seed and his seed. So it's the bloodline of who and who. Okay, so the devil has a seed. And God has a seed. We already know God is human. Jesus Christ. He's fully God and fully human. Okay. We've already discussed that. All right. Look at verse one. This is the written account of the descendants of Adam. When God created human beings, that's us, right? Okay. He made them to be like himself. Okay. Not like angels. Okay, not like animals. Okay, human. So when people have a problem that Jesus wasn't human, they gonna have a problem with the heavenly Father saying, "Huh, wasn't a human went down that died on the cross for you? It wasn't a turtle. If so, look for the turtle because my son is human. All right, he created them male and female. Okay, male and female, not them. Male and female, not a he she. Male and female." All right. And he blessed them and called them human, them pertaining male and female, not them, them, whoever them are, not what they trying to say them are now. No, them, which is pertaining to male and female human. All right. So with Jude chapter one, 
in verse 14 with that big clue. All right. That's when I knew the Holy Spirit was trying to tell me something. And this is when I very got all the way to the end and realized that because I was familiar with the book of Enoch before I got to the book of Jude. OK. And then the thing is, I just read the watcher part in the book of Enoch because I was very intrigued on that part. All right. But the thing is, this is where the Holy Spirit was trying to confirm something to me. All right. And then when people discussed it on the book of Enoch, not being inspired, but have some historical truth, that's when I believe like, oh, wow, you know, take some of that, you know, not with a grain of salt, but not fully truth. But what he is saying pertains some truth in it, just like Hollywood will throw some truth of you and subliminal messages and music and movies and so on and so forth. All right. So the Holy Spirit is speaking to you here. All right. The verse 14, Enoch, who lived in the seventh generation after Adam, we just read all that, prophesied about these people. All right. We talked about all the stuff that he prophesied. And he said, listen, the Lord is coming with. Well, actually, we didn't you know, talk about what he prophesied, but this is what he prophesied. He said, listen, the Lord is coming with countless thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment on the people of the world. He will convict every person of all ungodly things they have done and for all the insults that ungodly sinners have spoken against him. All right. So all of this is kind of mentioned. All right. It's the, Jude is alluding to you to go read the book. All right. Who is Jude being inspired by? The Holy Spirit. So if with that being said, go read the book after you read the scripture books. All right. And it help you. It enlighten you. It'll, it'll get you better, more in depth to understand the fallen angels in this fallen world. And it will open up so many webs where we just discussed with ancient civilizations and how things were more technique, I mean, well, more advanced back then than it is now, okay? Because when we speak on the timeline of how everything had to, you know, start over, start over, start over, and then about the new world and how the, you know, all this is, this is another study for another day, but all this will, it, it will tie together of why it is important to maybe take a glimpse at the Book of Enoch, all right. And so when I was rereading after reading and finishing the book, I started to read over with my wife, you know, so that was a way she can get a better clearing and understanding. And after we read the Torah, uh, which is Genesis through Deuteronomy, when we got to the book of Joshua, all right, this is what the Holy Spirit caught to my eye the second time around that I started reading the book. And like, like you guys will never fully understand the concept of the Holy Bible. It will be eternity. When you, you, it's best to start now. You better acknowledge your Lord now. All right. Because this book is it's amazing. It's alive. All right. And Joshua 10. All right. Verse 13. So the sun stood still and the moon stayed in place until the nation of Israel had defeated its enemies. Is this event not recorded in the book of Jasher? The sun stayed in the middle of the sky and it did not set on as on on a normal day. Hmm. So with that being said, that, you know, it, it went, whoa, uh, book of Jasher. I didn't even know there was a book of Jasher. All right. With that being said, I, when that caught my eye and I have scholar friends that is uh, supposed to be equipped to know the Bible, I asked them about the book of Jasher. And they didn't even know that there was a book of Jasher. And I'm like, oh, you supposed to be the, the top notch of these. You know, y'all supposed to know y'all's book, Mr. Pharisees, Mr. S you know, uh, uh, the Sadducees, uh, whatever you want to call yourself, uh, teacher of religious law. I thought y'all were supposed to know this. And y'all didn't see that. See, the Holy Spirit will show you who's anointed, who's supposed to have the word of God. All right, and supposed to be really presenting it the right way, and the ones that's doing it for a paycheck, the ones that want the popularity and have a quick fix of the of a not want to do nothing, claiming that they're always busy when really they're not. They're just chilling, talking to people, you know, spending money on you know, going to lunch. Hey, you want to go to lunch and talk about the Lord and say the same stuff over and over. You know, basically that's what they do. Okay, no one's getting changed. No one's getting saved. They really, you can't keep feeding baby milk. All right, you got to give them a whole meal. Okay, they got to do the south. This is a self salvation issue. You got to be born again yourself, guys. You got, you can lead the horse to the water, but you can't make the horse drink it. All right, that's the whole point of this. 
All right, so when you go to 1 Kings and you go to chapter 11, you go down to verse 41. All right, this is a summary of Solomon's reign. The rest of the event in Solomon's reign, including all his deeds and his wisdom, are recorded in the book of the Acts of Solomon. Solomon ruled in Jerusalem over all Israel for 40 years. When he died, he was buried in the city of David, named for his father. Then his son Rehoboam became the next king. All right. So when I came back and read first Kings and I saw, well, dang, here's another book. So this these led me to the rabbit hole of finding out about the other books. OK, like the book of Jubilees, the book of the Giants and all that. And why they're not so, you know, popular of being taught and told. Well, when I came to the conclusion about these books, it's mainly talking about the fallen ones, the demons and how to stop them. And the Maccabean revolt is how, you know, the Hebrews wasn't going to take the nonsense from the Greeks and they actually rebelled and fought against them. All right. That was that. Well, that's something that the Catholic Church don't want you to know. OK, when you read these apocryphals, when you read these pseudo books, when you read these lost books, the Holy Spirit will give you great discernment of which is real, which is fake. And when he show you all the ones like the Apocryphus that's not mentioned that people don't even know about, like the book of Tobit. All right. Uh, Bell and the Dragon and so on and so forth. OK, those are the books that you really want to pay attention to. They get into detail about the spiritual realm. All right. And then you got the, the Acts of Solomon. It mentions a lot about a signet ring and how he was casting out demons. OK, so. Like I said, read the 66 first because the only way you can fight against the spiritual warfare is having the Holy Spirit with you. And by doing that, it's doing what? Crucifying yourself. All right. It's by fasting and praying, reading your word, you know, all right, getting your relationship with the Lord. All right. It's by reading what he says, you get, get, get to know him. Okay. And then you're born again. Okay. After you read all that, I know that's what it is, guys. Read from Genesis to Revelation, get to know him. Fast and pray and believe in every word, chapter from chapter, verse from verse. Okay. Actually knowing this is your Lord, praying to him like, Lord, I know I'm not understanding this the first go around, but I know I can trust in you to help me understand, you know, from here on out. All right. I put my trust and faith in him. I know he's real. I know he's there. All right. I'm here to tell y'all the same. Okay. So with that being said, Let's end this and y'all guys have a good day. What if I told you the reason for Noah's flood may not be what we've been told? According to the book of Enoch, God sent an angel to Noah and said, Now instruct him that he may escape and his seed may be preserved for all the world and generations. And according to Enoch, the watchers descended upon the earth and messed with the divine DNA that God intended for his people by creating their own children and taking wives from the daughters of men. And according to Enoch, this flood was to reset or wipe out that very genetic line. That very thing that challenged God's original divine pure genetic line. And what if thousands of years later, the fullness of God in Yeshua walked the earth to repair this DNA fully? That's just my thought. Leave me a comment with yours and follow for more of this content. It truly is a mystery what would happen to those women who would bear the children of fallen angels. After being taught hidden knowledge from the heavens, these women would end up becoming the founders of sorcery. These were mothers of entire generations defiled by magic. Enoch says how the angels teach these women stuff like incantations and the dividing of roots, which is medicine. All this forbidden knowledge lands these women a uniquely strange punishment. These women would become the first ever mermaids. Their punishment was to be turned into sirens bound to the deep, deep blue sea. Of course, these were during the days of Noah. My question to you is, can a mermaid survive a flood? The siren is one of the oldest myths on earth. Sailors have always had these tales of beautiful girls who then turn into monsters who then drag them down to the bottom of the ocean. See, once upon a time, these beautiful sirens were the wives of fallen angels. And for what they had learned on earth, they were ultimately banished to the ocean. There's a chance the Book of Enoch is revealing the truth. According to what we now know, the Book of Enoch was suppressed in the 4th century because it did not accurately reflect the ancient scriptures. What if this isn't the case? What if it was because it accurately depicted human nature? 
In the book, it is explained how a group of angels known as the Watchers started rebelling against God and started teaching people things they weren't supposed to know, such astrology and how to make nuclear weapons. They started lying to human women in addition to doing that, which led to the creation of the Nephilim. Others claim that the book is untrue, yet given the descriptions of how the earth was formed, the positions of the sun and moon, and even the current whereabouts of the Watcher Angels, perhaps. Bayonetta, she was a naked witch that's fighting the angels of God. Neon Genesis Evangelion, same thing. Earth got seeded with the seeds of life and the seeds of knowledge. The angels of God literally had to come to Earth to try and destroy half of humanity. The humans decide to make Oni robot. The good guys are controlling the demon robots fighting the angels of God, and that's the heroes. His dark materials, same thing. We're going to fight against the creator. We, the fallen angels were cast out of heaven. They found somebody on Earth that was worthy to help them in this holy war against the creator. Seven deadly sins, the same thing. The seven deadly sins. Each of them are a personification of each sin. They are the heroes who are fighting against, guess who? The Ten Commandments. Why would anyone root for the good guys who are the seven deadly sins in opposition to things like love and peace and joy? Shin Megami Tenshi, same thing. Guess who the villain is? Yahweh. This is over and over and over again. This is brainwashing propaganda. The Book of Enoch might be telling the truth. Now, we have been told that the Book of Enoch was taken out in the 4th century because it wasn't accurate to the original scriptures. But what if that wasn't the case? What if it was because it told the truth about humanity? Well, you see, it's described in the book about how a group of angels known as the Watchers started rebelling against God and began teaching humans things that they weren't supposed to know, like astrology and creating weapons of mass destruction. Not only did they do that, but they began laying with human women, which resulted in the birth of the Nephilims. Some argue that the book was false, but with the accounts of the way the world was shaped, the sun and the moon, and even the current location of the Watcher Angels, maybe. Should I read the Ethiopian Enoch? I would say it when it comes to books that lie outside the canonical tradition, I would say we should read anything that the biblical writers read because the more you have what they had at their disposal in your head, the better able you'll be to pick up what they're laying down. If you read Enoch, the Genesis Apocryphon, the Baal Cycle, if the Wisdom of Amenemope, you read these texts and a good study Bible will tell you what they're dipping into and you can go read it. Ancient books don't have to be canonical to be valuable. And if an ancient book is valuable, the reverse is true. That doesn't mean it's canonical either. My advice is always read the material that the biblical writers were exposed to because they're not writing to you. They're writing to people who lived in their day that they assumed would just kind of know that. You're not going to just kind of know that. So I would say, yeah, we need to expose ourselves to that so we just become more intelligent readers of Scripture. We ought to praise God. Let's turn our blessings, I'll teach you a lesson, and then we gon' praise God. Yeah, yeah, uh. We ought to praise God. Let's turn our blessings, I'll teach you a lesson, and then we gon' praise God. Yeah, each other right here. We ought to praise God. Let's turn our blessings, I'll teach you a lesson, and then we gon' praise God.